I got something to tell you guys. It will basically save a lot of time because the New Year's coming upon me and I still haven't finished this project. So I'm looking at Roberto Duran versus Jose Luis Castillo level of opposition. We're going to set the record straight on this because there's a lot of things people believe and they really haven't checked the facts on it. All right, let's first start off with the level of opposition. But first, we're going to talk about Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran is known as the greatest lightweight ever because up to lightweight, he had 64 fights and he won 63 and lost one. And that record sounds good. But as with all things, you have to examine records to see what the substance of that record is. And as Roger Mayweather would say, he would say, who the fuck he fought? Who the fuck he fought? Then he go ask, who the fuck he beat? Who the fuck he beat? And that's a really good question to ask because it tells you the level of opposition and are you overhyped? Is your skill set really what it is? And we're only looking at Roberto Duran up to his lightweight career. Same thing for Jose Luis Castillo. Now bear in mind this very important fact. There were times when Roberto Duran was fighting above lightweight. He was fighting at super lightweight. And there are also points in time when Jose Luis Castillo was also fighting above lightweight. But however, they were lightweights because when they did any championship matches, they fought at lightweight. So let's get into it. Let's start off with the first guy he beat. This is early in his career. In his 17th fight, he got a challenge of the lifetime from Ernesto Marcel. Ernesto Marcel was the future featherweight champion of the world. And he beat names such as Alexis Aguayo, Samuel Serrano. Go on and check him out. He's a long-standing featherweight champion. Antonio Gomez, who he won the title from. He also faced Kuniaka Shibata, and he was robbed of the championship. He should have beaten Kuniaka Shibata. He put on a beating on that boy. But you know, back in the days, what used to happen, and you know, the guys called flat nose, if you call flat nose, all right, then obviously there was some racism going on there. In fact, when you watch him fight against Roberto Duran, the fight was neck and neck. It was a very close fight going into the 10th. And the 10th round probably would have decided the fight. Of course, what we call El Nato or the nose, flat nose. El Nato, he wasn't really putting up any fight. He wasn't hitting Roberto Duran. And the referee just stopped the fight just like that. You can go ahead and watch the footage of the fight. It's on YouTube. That's his only knockout loss, which really wasn't a knockout at all. But it is what it is. But this guy, he has five world champions, past, future, and present, who he actually fought. And of them, he beat three of them outright by the judge's decision. And one of them... He actually beat as well. In his 26th fight, he faced a former world champion at super featherweight. At the time, Roberto Duran was at lightweight. So this guy moved up to lightweight to fight him. Hiroshi Kobayashi. He had just gotten knocked out by Alfredo Marcano at super featherweight. Because he was the super featherweight champion. And he went on to face Roberto Duran three months later. And the only difference was Roberto Duran's size. Kobayashi couldn't handle the size. All right, But Kobayashi, he beat some really good world champions. He beat Ricardo Arendondo, Yoshiaka, Numata. To get the undisputed super featherweight title he lost it he was stripped of it later on in his career ken buchanan ken buchanan was the man at lightweight he got stripped of the wba title but he faced and beat ishmael laguna twice he also uh beat the other man in the division at the time whose name was carlos ortiz after being beaten by roberto duran but here's the jokey part about the whole thing this guy got hit in the balls and that's why he lost that fight the fight was stopped because he was hitting the balls he was coming back in the fight no doubt duran did drop him early on was winning the fight but what a way to go out, man. Esteban de Asus. As you can see, if you just look at the weight, they did not fight at lightweight. They fought at super lightweight, which is why Esteban de Asus did not get the title from Roberto Duran. So the Roberto Duran preserved his title, even though he lost that fight to Esteban de Asus, who knocked him down in the first round. Roberto Duran, Antonio Cervantes, Kutz Ichimatsu, and Saul Mambe. These are all world champions we're talking about. He was beaten by Mambe, Antonio Cervantes, and Duran, but he had a win over Duran and over Kutz Ichimatsu. So he faced four world champions, he beat two, and he was beaten by three. All right, I don't regard Jimmy Robinson. I don't regard Hector Thompson. These guys fought. Nobody beat nobody, and nobody's beat them. But good Sichimatsu, you got to regard good Sichimatsu. Now, he got beaten by Roberto Duran after beat Rodolfo Gonzalez, who was the WBC lightweight champion. And you can go and check out his history. He also beat Ken Buchanan. That was once the man at lightweight. Okay, that's two world champions. Then he faced Esteban Jesus, and he lost to him. So he faced four world champions. He was beaten by two of them, and he beat two of them, which is very big, okay? Again, who he beat, who he fought. I ignore all these guys. I don't even understand how Masataka Takayama even fought Roberto Duran. I, I don't understand. Ray Lampkin never fought nobody. I don't even know why he was fighting Roberto Duran. You know what I mean? He was high up the ranks, but he never fought anybody. The most he ever fought was Esteban de Asus. He lost to him. Anytime he stepped up to the A level, he lost. He was fighting journeymen. You know, it's just funny how people talk about today, and if you look at yesteryear, the other guy he fought that was worth talking about, and only because this guy literally, I believe, beat him twice, is Edwin Vera. Edwin Vera, he never beat nobody. 
I mean, the other guy who he beat, he's not really a name, is Villamar Fernandez. Villamar Fernandez had a win over Alexis Aguayo, all right? He beat him once. Alexis Aguayo came back and beat him. And everybody beat Villamar Fernandez. Everybody. Howard Davis Jr., Rodolfo Gonzalez, Alexis Aguayo, Roberto Duran. Anybody who was A-level beat him. All right, Evan Viret, like I said, he beat Villamar Fernandez, right? Who's the guy that beat him? Alexis Aguayo. He also had a draw with Saul Mambe, who's another big name guy that we need to talk about. Now, this guy, he was actually avoided by a lot of people. He had two close fights with Roberto Duran. In fact, the crowd booed the first time they said that Duran won the fight against him. And the second time around, I remember the commentator saying that Duran definitely won the fight. But honestly speaking, to me, I think that Viret won the fight again. In fact, he cut Roberto Duran over his eye and he was just having fun. He was laughing all the way through the fight. And he had a very close fight with Esteban Asus. But again, Esteban Asus being the name, he got the decision over him, right? So when you talk about Viret, these are the names he fought. Rosario, Duran, De Jesus, and Saul Mambe. He drew with Mambe, and he lost the, lost the fights. He didn't get the decision with the other three fights. Definitely, though, Rosario knocked his ass out. <laughs> Last guy I got to talk about, Saul Mambe. He was beaten comprehensively. I mean, he was definitely beaten by Duran. But he went on to become the super lightweight champion of the world, hold it down for a minute, and actually knock out Esteban De Jesus, who had stamina problems. You get Esteban De Jesus past the 10th round, and you can knock him out. And that's basically what Duran did to him to win the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. So he faced Esteban De Jesus for the third time. It was his nemesis. And he became the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. If you look at all those names I just mentioned, and I'm putting the numbers right next to you so you can see, he only faced seven tested and tried opponents, okay, in his 64 fights. But who he actually beat? Well, it was seven named guys that he actually fought and seven named guys that he actually beat. Okay, he faced some of them multiple times because the first time, you know, either they beat him or people perceived that they beat him. Now, let's consider the competition Jose Luis Castillo faced in his career. So, in Castillo's 19th fight, he faced Cesar Soto. Cesar Soto beat Luisito Espinosa, become the WBC World Featherweight Champion of the World. Before that, he was mowing down just about everybody else. He had lost to Josecito Espinosa before. Uh, this is a great Filipino fighter I keep on telling you guys about at featherweight and also bantamweight champion. And um, he went on to face the legendary Nassim Hamed in the next fight. And he lost by unanimous decision his title. He never regained it after that. But I'm just telling you, this is the kind of competition that Jose Luis Castillo begins his career with. Whereas Duran, he got the decision over Ernesto Marcel. Jose Luis Castillo, he gets his ass knocked out in the second round. He go on his 22nd fight to face Javier Haragui. The Reynosos were the guys that trained Javier Haragui. So he was a good boxer. He had some decent power. And uh, he was a pressure fighter. And this guy, he stopped Jose Luis Castillo in the 10th round. Twice. He fought him twice in his 22nd and 27th fight. And Javier Haragui would go on to become the IBF World Lightweight Champion when he defeated Levander Johnson. Who would later become the IBF World Lightweight Champion himself. He lost to Julio Diaz who beat him by majority decision the following fight. So Haragui went on to become a world champion. He then went on in 1999 to face Jorge Paez. And Jorge Paez was a long reigning featherweight champion. He was a unified featherweight champion. He had a lot of successful defenses until he faced Tony the Tiger Lopez. He moved up in weight to face Jose Luis Castillo at super featherweight. He was basically a featherweight by nature. So Castillo's size, I believe, gave him an advantage, which is why he knocked out Jorge Paez. He then went on in 2000 to face the number one lightweight in the world, Stevie Johnson, and produce the upset of the year. And Stevie Johnson was a long-standing lightweight champion. It was him and Shane Mosley who were number one and number two lightweights in the world. Shane Mosley moved up to welterweight to fight Oscar De La Hoya, and so Stevie Johnson became the number one lightweight in the world. He had defeated Jean-Baptiste Mende around the same time that Shane Mosley defeated Philip Holiday. And he lost to Cesar Bazan, went back for Cesar Bazan, defeated him, and he beat names such as Cesar Bazan, Jean-Baptiste Mendy, and Alejandro Gonzalez in his career. All of whom I just mentioned were former world champions. When he beat Stevie Johnson, he became the number one lightweight in the world. He'd go on to face the guy that beat Stevie Johnson, Cesar Bazan. He would defeat him by knockout. And then he faced the best fighter of this era, Floyd Mayweather Jr. He faced him twice. The first fight was so close in people's minds and people thought that he beat him that he faced him again. After he faced Floyd Mayweather Jr., he faced Juan Lascanzo. Now, Juan Lascanzo never became world champion, but he faced the likes of names like Ricky Hatton, Vivian Harris, Ben Tacky, Jose Luis Castillo, Stevie Johnson, John John Molina, Jesse James Lea, and Wilfredo Vasquez. He defeated four former world champions, and he was defeated by Jose Luis Castillo, Vivian Harris, and Ricky Hatton, which are three other world champions. That's why we mention him.
Very good fighter. By the way, with Vivian Harris, it was a very close fight up to the 10th. Harris took the 11th and 12th. But Lascanzo had figured him out and was really coming at him. After fighting Juan Lascanzo, he faced Joel Casimiro. By the way, he regained his lightweight championship. He lost it to Floyd Mayweather and regained the lightweight championship by facing Juan Lascanzo. He then became the lineal champion. He faced Joel Casimiro. Casimiro was a slick Cuban boxer, super featherweight champion. He beat names such as Roberto Garcia, who was a champion himself. He faced Asselino Freitas, lost to him. Defeated the undefeated Nate Campbell, slick southpaw. He defeated Diego Corrales twice. He also has a win over Michael Katsidis. Lost to Juan Manuel Marquez, Robert Guerrero, and Timothy Bradley. He really did his best work, super featherweight and lightweight. This guy's skills, I mean, he beats almost everybody on Roberto Duran's list, except for Ernesto Marcel. I think Ernesto Marcel gives him a run for his money. Then we got Julio Diaz. And this is back-to-back -back fights I'm talking about now. Julio Diaz was the IBF World Lightweight Champion. He had beaten Javier Haragui to get the IBF World Lightweight title. The same Javier Haragui that had knocked out Jose Luis Castillo early in his career. He faced Jose Luis Castillo, got knocked out in the 10th round. And this brother came back because they stripped him of the IBF title before he faced Jose Luis Castillo. He went back and got back his title, beating a little beast in Jesus Chavez. He beat him. The fight was stopped early in the third round because I think Jesus Chavez got cut eye. But said, I'm getting back my IBF World Lightweight title. And he took it back. And then he faced the man of the division, the beast of the division, Juan Diaz. And Juan Diaz knocked his ass out to take away the title from him. And finally, Diego Corrales. I don't have to say much about Diego Corrales, but I'm just going to show you his resume. I'm just going to show you who he beat. Motherfucking Diego Corrales. Excuse my French. Motherfucking Diego Corrales won the IBF World Super Featherweight title by knocking the fuck out of Roberto Garcia. I mean, he knocked that motherfucker out cold. Okay? He then knocked out another world champion, Derek Gaynor. Then he beat Angel Manfredi, knocking his ass out in the third round. He faced Floyd Mayweather Jr. Everybody thought Floyd Mayweather Jr. was going to get his ass knocked out. Because why? Because Diego Corrales was the number one super featherweight in the world at the time. Floyd was number two. And Floyd actually got the stoppage on him in the 10th round. He knocked him down five times. To be honest with you, Diego Corrales looked like he could have gone on. Because that motherfucker could take a punch. He, he goes down, but he gets back up. And faced Joel Casemiro at super featherweight. The first time, he had a cut lip, so the fight was stuck. Casemiro was awarded the knockout decision. He rematched Casemiro the following year, and he won a split decision win over him. The thing about Diego Corrales was this, right? Diego Corrales, he had a certain degree of slickness. He was really an inside fighter, but he used his jab from long range to get in on you. And, dude, that man, not only could he take a punch, but he could also, he was slippery. He was slick with the, the movement. He had an awkward movement as well. So when Asselino Freitas, who's a great boxer, faced him, just like Joe Casemiro, he could box enough to get on you. He cut off the ring like a motherfucker, man. That Him and Jose Luis Castillo, those motherfuckers knew how to cut off a ring. I mean, you guys can look at uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. You can look at Roberto Duran, how they, you know, pushed themselves on their opponents and they got on the inside and roughed them up and pushed them to the ropes. These motherfuckers use it like a science, man. They, they be tracking you down. They're like a fucking bounty hunter on your ass. You know what I mean? They really, I'm telling you, man, you got to watch how these guys cut off the ring. Y'all think Gennady Golovkin is bad? Man, you should see these motherfuckers in action, man. Anyway, this dude, Asselina Freitas, was pot shot at him, trying to, and he was just hitting Asselina Freitas to the body, using the jab. You know, he, had, he was tough. He was taking some punches from Asselina Freitas, tracking him down, and boy, he dropped him, I think it was three times, and then the fight had to be stopped. Freitas couldn't get back up from another body punch. Mixed the head punch, and then he came with the body punch. You know, David Cross is a machine, man. He's a machine. Face Jose Luis Castillo. Castillo was on the brink of knocking his ass out, and instead, Castillo gets knocked out in the 10th round. It was, as still is for me, the most fantastic, exciting drama film fight I've ever seen. 